looking at parent drop-off versus bus drop-off, and playground improvements as well. You'll notice, I, I just want to point out, I skipped it on big flats, but you can notice I've identified dollar values associated with each of the individual buildings here on these slides. As I move through the presentation, you'll see a later slide that compiles this all into one slide. But I wanted to put that, point that out to you just so you can kind of get an idea of how the money is being spent across the building. Moving on to Gardner Road, again, um, mechanical improvements, that's all of that green area. So there's a number of air handling units that need to be replaced here at this building. Ceiling replacements, energy improvements with lighting. Um, one of the things we want to identify here, the area in pink at the main entrance is actually, we, we did a secure, secure entrance project here in the district. And there were a couple of schools that there was still some more improvements that could be done here at Gardner Road. If you're familiar with this one, there's still that large amount of glass from the lobby into the main office, as well as a door that was an outdated door that wasn't able to be improved with security. So just kind of finishing that project is one of the other line items we plan to do here at, the, at Gardner Road Elementary. And then parking lot, this is probably one of the more complicated ones in terms of parent drop-off at the elementary level, parent drop-off versus bus drop-off. Um, so this is, that's really a highlight probably at this building more so than maybe some of the others other than middle school and intermediate. But at the elementary level, that's really a high priority here at Gardner Road is to create a, a distinct place for parent drop-off versus bus drop-off and improve the, the safety for the students as they get dropped off. Ridge Road, again, mechanical systems, lighting improvements, really focusing on that energy and focusing on building a, a, a solid shell to the outside of the building as we move forward with the project. This is another one where you'll notice the boiler rooms highlighted. So this is um, yet another building that has steam heating left in the, in the district. In fact, this might be, um, other than here at the high school at the elementary level, this will be the last one. So the idea is getting rid of all of that steam, that old steam, inefficient steam heating throughout the district and, and bringing it to that energy efficient. Again, looking at playgrounds and looking at improvements to the parent drop-off and bus drop-off or parking lot improvements. Excuse me. Moving on to the middle school, intermediate school. If I were to start on the outside, one of the highest priorities that we've talked about through all of these meetings is really that parent drop-off, bus drop-off. I know this current year, my daughter actually is in fifth grade. And there's been some changes that the district has even made currently with just how the protocol works at that building. And I think we've seen some improvements already just with moving where the drop-off happens. But I think there's still more that we can do with that parking lot and even out on Sing Sing Road. So that's part of this project is continuing to address that and continuing to improve that, that safety for drop-off. And also just the traffic flow and not having traffic back up. Moving to the inside of the building, here at this building, one of the big things we're looking at is the kitchen cafeteria. Um, basically gutting that and, and renovating that kitchen. That's a major kitchen here at the district. And as part of the moving to the outside, or to the cafeteria side, there's currently a courtyard that's in between the two intermediate and, and middle school cafeterias. The idea there being making that one space with dividers in it so that during the school day you can still have distinct cafeterias. But then if there is a need for a major event or an assembly to be held inside that space, um, we can have one stage with a larger gathering space for the student body. So that should help with, improve with the, just the flow of the cafeteria during the school day, but also offer that meeting space inside the building. We've also got renovations in the main gym area. And go, moving to the classrooms, the things we want to focus on are the technology space down on the middle school side on the ground floor, as well as that whole ramp, stairs, handicap lift. So we'd really like to get rid of those stairs so that there isn't just one handicap lift at one end of that, but put, be able to ramp that and be able to make that into a, a fully accessible space and renovate those technology rooms in the process, as well as the art rooms on the opposite side. And then moving up to the ground, the first floor, ground floor on the middle school side, we also want to look at um, highlighting those science rooms and, and beginning to kind of work through the classrooms at the middle school and, and renovate those spaces. Another big focus here is the secure entrance on the exterior. 
we, again, we did those secure entrances, and I think they worked pretty well at the middle school and intermediate school, but that's one of those buildings that has an at-grade entrance. So some of the concern that's been expressed is the idea that there's not really that buffer between vehicle traffic and being able to go the pedestrian traffic into that building. So trying to create some kind of barrier or safety barrier between those two activities. And then here we're also still looking at some mechanical improvements and lighting upgrades throughout the building to improve energy efficiency and some roof replacements. Moving to the high school, I've split this kind of in two, two slides. So we'll talk about the outside of the building first and then the inside of the building. So on the outside of the building, we've really kind of identified, I think, three major areas that we want to address on the outside of the building. One is um, a new main entrance. So right now, we've got a main entrance that when you come to the building, the visitor parking is a little displaced from it. The main office isn't located at the entrance, so there's kind of a disconnect there. So the idea of bringing a central entrance to the building, to the high school, where everyone can come, whether it's to drop off students, pick up students, whether it's during the day coming to the main office or coming to the nurse's office or guidance office, that, that activity, when you come to the building, you know you've got one location to come to the building. And that's a secure entrance and it takes you to the services that you want to utilize. You don't necessarily need to be wandering through the building to be able to find the nurse's office. So we create that main entrance, and I kind of touched on the ability to improve the parent drop-off here. Right now, the parent drop-off and pickup is, is a little, it's kind of by the link, it's also kind of out by the junior parking lot, by the little plaza, out by the cafeteria. It's kind of dis dispersed throughout the building. So the idea of being able to make that drop-off a safe and centralized location, I think is a good priority that the board has tasked us with. So creating that entrance, creating that parent drop-off, and then finally a multi-purpose stadium, multi-use stadium. You know, we have, a, we have a current stadium that requires a lot of maintenance. It's also a stadium that doesn't allow for a lot of excessive play. You have to kind of do a lot of maintenance on that and stay focused on your, when you may have a certain uh, football game or something like that on that field. The idea here is bringing in a multi-purpose stadium with lights that could be utilized throughout the course of the day. There isn't the concern of you've got to preserve it for Saturday or you've got to preserve it for this other day. The field could literally be in use every day, all day into the evening with the lights. So practicing from marching band to soccer to PE to football to whatever it needs to be on that stadium. The idea is to, to provide a surface that can hold up and, and handle that kind of use as well as providing the lighting to extend the day on that, on that multi-use stadium. So just some images here of the new main entrance. I think it's important to identify it from the outside, to see it as an entrance, to, to be able to recognize it with signage and know that that's the entrance. I kind of mentioned the middle school, the idea of at grade entrances here. We've got the, the advantage of a grade that doesn't afford us at grade entrance. So it actually provides the opportunity for steps and it creates that disconnect from pedestrian traffic versus vehicular traffic. So it's a really nice natural barrier. And just some different views from coming into that main entrance. So moving to the inside of the building, obviously um, you've noticed that we've identified the exist the current library as that new main entrance. So when we displace the library, we've got to provide a new library. And the library really, as we had meetings with the staff, the, the library is really the central hub of the high school. You know, it's, it's activity that happens regardless of what classes you're assigned to. It, inevitably, you will end up in the library at some point as, as, as a student here at Horsehead High School. So the idea of making that library a centralized place was really important. Um, and so centralized library, as well as Pedestrian traffic throughout the high school has kind of struggled even since I was in high school here, other than the fact that when I was here, we were allowed to go out and use the quad as an actual transition from the south to the north. So if you came from the left, it wasn't necessarily a problem to go from English class over to science class without having to go through the link. Now with security the way that it is, obviously we can't allow our students to be leaving the building like that. So the next, next natural thing to do to be able to, to improve that pedestrian traffic is to create that connection from the south to the north. 
and you can see us doing that here in the yellow. So the idea is that library that's centralized with a new corridor that makes the connection from north to south. Some of the other things here inside the building, you can see all of the light blue that's indicated on the board. That's all renovated classrooms. Um, so the idea there is to take current classrooms that are either disproportionately sized um, and certainly outdated in terms of finishes and even some of the technology that's inside of those classrooms and renovate those to bring those up to the 21st century. And then you can also see in the dark blue area where the link currently is. Um, the link currently is just kind of an unloaded, unsupervised space that really is just a transition space. The idea we have is to actually put classrooms on that, utilize some of that space, so we continue to create that corridor connection, but actually use that space for, for some classrooms. And the concept there is really once you make that corridor a utilized corridor, uh, supervisory issues become less of an issue. And then finally, looking at renovating the kitchen cafeteria here. The kitchen and cafeteria size-wise is, is not necessarily a bad setup, but if you are familiar with any of the schools in the, in the area, whether it's to the south of us in Elmira or to the west of us in Corning or even Watkins Glen, a lot of these high schools have kind of made a transition from the old traditional go through a serving line with your tray and you're given the hot meal to kind of giving the students more options and allowing them to what we call a scatter method where they can kind of go to the thing that they want to choose, the food item that they want to choose, and not be forced through this serving line. Uh, the idea there is, just like anything, we want to make the kids want to be in school. And although we can tell them they have to be in school, these types of amenities, these types of things make a school a better place to be, and it encourages learning, and it, and it generally makes the day better for the students. So giving them some of those options and improving the, the aesthetics of the space really makes the building the building, the students want to be in the building. And just to give you some, these are, and, and I should have prefaced it on the entrance, these are really conceptual designs. We've had only a couple of meetings with, we did have the opportunity to meet with the librarian. Um, we've also had an opportunity to meet with the high school staff, but these are really conceptual. The idea here being, we need to create a new space, and these are some of the ideas that could, that could fall inside of that space. So as I promised, here is um, by building the cost associated with the project. Um, so if you go back and compare those original slides, you'll see by building the cost. And you can see at the elementary schools, we stated about the same amount of money. Um, and not to complicate things, but there is a way that New York State Education provides money to school districts. And that, that money is provided based on certain calculations and what's called a maximum cost allowance. So each building is entitled to a certain amount of aid. And what we're really doing here is trying to maximize that aid, maximize as much aid as we can get from New York State without having a significant or, any, or very little impact on the local share of the local taxpayer. So you can see highlighted in yellow there that final $94,685,637. That's the, that's the dollar value that's been distributed out in the mailers that you've kind of been seeing throughout the, the past few weeks. So when somebody sees that last slide, first thing, I've been out to already over 30 meetings, they say is, ooh, 94.6. Uh, this project is something that could be potentially transformational uh, for the district, similar to what other districts in the entire area have already gone through, which horse heads is not. But the question is, is how is the money broken up? And that's what this slide says. Basically, this tells us for the expenses for this project, it, uh, the pie chart to the left basically will tell you where the money is proportioned throughout the district. And at this point, you can see, obviously, the secondary, the high school, and the middle school have the larger price tag because that's the allowable aid that we could possibly see in a five-year period from New York State Education Department. The question is, is if we did not do this project, what will happen to that money? Well, it'll just go to another school district. Doesn't mean we're going out to just try to get money to get money for money's sake, but it's the board's position as well as the school district's position in district administration to try to make sure we get the best fiscal plan for Horseheads 
to revamp their entire district over a course of a period of time that allows money to come in from the state, which is your money that pays for other districts, so it comes back home and we better represent you and ask others across the state to help us. The question then becomes, okay, if that's how it's going to be spent, how's the revenue going to flow? And that's the pie chart to the right. If you notice, the green, the purple, and the blue, that's how we're going to pay for the project, with the green being a vast majority of the money will come from the state, which is your money and my money, but also everybody's uh, taxes from across the state. When you look at the purple part, that is our retiring debt. In other words, we're using money that we would be paying otherwise in our budget that we will no longer have to pay to help also fund a portion of this project, about 18%. And then also the district authorized a capital reserve in the amount of $10 million, which we just raised to 15, but we would be utilizing $10 million of savings in the district, which is your money as well. You're the only ones that can authorize the use of that money to offset the local share. So at the culmination of those three sources of revenue, the item in red is what's left. And that's where we need the community support to make this project happen. That's the local impact. And that local impact in the course of this roughly $95 million project is about 2% of the total cost. It's easy to show in pie charts. The question is, what does it mean to me and how is it going to impact me? We've taken that same pie chart. Notice everything in green is what we talked about. That's what's going to either come from our capital reserve, our local debt, uh, retirement, or state aid. And what's left is the red slice of the local share. We've asked our fiscal advisors, who, do, who really do all of our financial planning, to take the most conservative estimate. And what they mean by that is that when they bo we borrow money, it's going to have an interest rate associated with it. They took the most conservative estimate of 4.5% interest rate. In other words, they're calculating that into our cost. Right now, if we were to borrow this money, a lot of the bonds are coming in at less than two, right around 1.8%. So we already know that if we borrow that money right now, there's a difference in what they estimated to here. So we want to always prepare for the worst possible aspect of that, and that's the highest interest rate. In addition, we also underestimated the amount of building aid we would receive from New York State. In a perfect world, we will develop a project that is 100% aidable, and the state will give us all the money towards that project that we're eligible for. Nobody's perfect. So we've underestimated that 97 to 98% because we're trying to build as close to the perfect project as possible. Again, taking conservative estimate. Keeping those factors in mind, the calculation at the most or the maximum estimated tax levy increase that would be required over a six-year period would be 1.87%. Now, it's easy when I say 1.87%, people will still say that common question. What does it mean in dollars and cents? So we want to start with the basics. Any school district tax is based on what's known as the tax on true, or our tax rate. And that tax rate for us has just decreased again to $17.53 per $1,000 of assessed value in your residence or home that you own. So as we go through, what does the local share mean? It means the cost per thousand of assessed value in the Horsehead Central School District will be 32 and 8 one thousandths of a cent. So on a thousand dollars of value, your taxes six years out would be increased no more than roughly 32 to 33 cents. Now, that's the maximum amount levied over four years because we won't borrow all the money at the same time. It will be phased in starting in the year 2019. 2020, 2021, and 2022. At the end of 2022, per thousand, you would see a total potential tax levy increase of 32 to 33 cents per thousand. Now, we all know that we don't have a home valued at a thousand, so we wanted to give you an example based on a hundred thousand dollar home. 
for a home with an assessed value of $100,000 in our district. The estimated tax increase spread out over four years, starting in 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022, is exactly what's up here. In 2019, the amount of money that we would need to start the first part of construction, it would require on a $100,000 home, a 36 cent a year tax increase. In the second year, you would add to it $11.23. In the third year, you would add to it again $11.06 for a $100,000 home. And in the fourth year, $10.17, which when you add all four of them up in the year 2022, would equal $32.80 for a $100,000 home. That would be the cost for this potential increase on that home. If you have a $200,000 home, you would double. If you have a $50,000 home, you would cut it in half. So we've tried to make sure that we're clear, transparent about the potential cost. And again, this would be the maximum cost by our fiscal advisors. If the interest rate is lower, if the project is more aidable, that number goes down. And we have a conservative estimate from fiscal advisors who unfortunately couldn't be here tonight because they're still flying back from Syracuse. Uh, but they have confirmed in front of the board, uh, in front of the community and on camera that this is the best and highly confident estimate for the community. So the question is on the local share, what does it really mean? Some people like it broken down by what will it cost me a year? Well, as you can see, 1.87% would be the maximum that we would expect in, in six years out or four years over the payment cycle. And that cost on 100,000, we already said was $32.80. The same thing, this is all on a $100,000 home. The cost of this per month would be roughly $2.73. The cost per week would be broken down to 64 cents a week, or if somebody would like the cost per day, it's 0 0.09 cents per day. And again, all of these numbers are based at the final closeout of the project in the year 2022. So hopefully we've given you at least a, a good financial overview of what we expect and uh, estimate from that. Carolyn is our interim business director. She has been through many projects in many different school districts. She's worked with fiscal advisors and I checked with her as well. And we're around for questions as well. And I'll, I'll ask Carolyn to do some response for fiscal as well. So when you look at this, the question is, is and we had this question before, what are the positives? What are the, the, the telltale signs that this is worth it or positive or even needed for a Horsehead Central School District? Well, you've heard many ideals and concepts along the lines of safety and security to, in this day and age, we can never be too careful. Our entrances, our technology and communication need to be brought in to the appropriate time to prepare our students for uh, post-secondary education as well as the world of work around them. In addition, traffic flow has been one of the biggest things. Uh, we've attempted to address it. I'm happy to say that we've gotten nothing but very good compliments on Sing Sing Road. And I know we've also announced and released a press release today. It's official. We've received over $230,000 from the New York State government, courtesy of Senator O'Mara, as well as assistance from the county of Shemung and Andy Avery, that next summer they will be now widening Sing Sing Road and putting in turning lanes as well as turnoff lanes to ease in traffic congestion, which ultimately will hopefully help us in our project development to really work at a way to make sure traffic flow is so much better at the middle school and that pass through. In addition, one of the things that Horse says has always prided itself is being a district of choice, top education, top facility, top community involvement. These all have lasting impacts if this consideration is affirmed by the community. And they will have potential impacts for the years to come, not only the years, but potentially the decades. Uh, it, positives is quality facilities also open up and extend to the community as well as to other avenues and outside opportunities to possibly bring statewide activities or regional wide activities to Horsehead. One of the biggest things when you saw about the high school is a centralized library that will also rise to the standards of what we expect for students going off into the world of work or into secondary post-secondary education at the college. One of the concepts is really to try to make this high school, but also a high school that prepares students for beyond high school 
and he gives them and immerses them in an environment that is conducive to that college level education. In addition, the district has always prided itself on energy efficiency. This also provides over this project and maybe future ones, the opportunity to even go deeper into our energy efficiencies and utilizations, as well as we're updating systems and operational uh, activities in the district that are really out of date, such as the steam boilers and uh, mechanical systems that are currently in place. In addition, you can't say uh, that this won't happen, it's more of a feel. But when you have one of the top areas to work in with education and then have an environment that is conducive to that, there's a certain amount of productivity and pride that goes along with it. Not only with staff, not only with students, but also with the community and the residents of the community, especially if we open our doors and make sure that we're there for them, not just education. In addition, look at, when you talk about the local economy, our governor has talked tremendously about over the past five years of sort of invigorating our economy. We've made investments in Buffalo, over a billion dollars. We've made investments in three upstate areas with $500 million each awarded to Rochester, Syracuse, and the North Country. Two years ago, the Southern Tier was given a $500,000 economic uh, ingenuity grant okay, for the entire Southern Tier. We're starting to see some impacts of that. Fifty to $60,000 being invested in the airport. $25 million being invested in downtown Elmira revitalization grant. And just as recently as four weeks ago, $10 million being targeted for Watkins Glen. What happens is, if we make that investment, we may not be able to wait for somebody else to just invest that money in us. We make that small investment to bring the investment back to us that we've been contributing to for many years. That if we make that investment, just in our project alone will be more investment in this area for economic uh, stability for the district, the region, but also for economic investment for bringing money into the region, especially Horsehead's business and vendors, which ultimately will have impact on property values, the district, and really helping the district be the district of choice coming in as anyone else relocates to the area. I know that's sometimes hard to believe, but we do have a lot of people relocating, just like we have some leaving. But if they're relocating, wouldn't it be nice to make sure that they choose horses? Now, last thing is really critical. Over the past several years, over a million dollars of our yearly budget is being invested to cover infrastructure needs. That is coming directly from the educational program. The capital projects need to start being funded over many years and cycled so that our retiring debt starts to pay for them instead of going to the local tax base. But because we haven't really had that pattern in place, right now we have to fund a strategic process of improving our facilities over time will allow us to start that ever-flowing uh, opportunity to maximize our value and maximize state aid, which will ultimately help us to eliminate using over a million dollars a year in our educational budget and applying it back to the education, which is sorely needed, especially after the Great Recession. So these are just some of the positive results. There's many, many more. You can't go into all of them, but some we won't even know about. Uh, there are always negatives, but you try to downplay the negatives because at this point, this is a consideration that the board, the administration feels the community needs to be aware of. So it comes down to this at this point. This community me meeting is also for your questions and answers, but we want to remind you, the most important thing, the Board of Education cannot make, it to make the final decision. The administration and staff cannot make the final decision. We're the only government agency that absolutely does the will of the people. We put this forth as open and transparent as possible, and we ask that all members of the Horseshead Central School District come out and vote, who are eligible to vote, on Tuesday, October 17th, in the High School South Gymnasium, from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. And if you notice, it's only one location. I know everyone has been used to going to three different locations, Big Flat, Ridge Road, and here. During this process, our legal financial advisors have informed us that in order to follow New York State education law, we must hold the votes in one location. Otherwise, we would have to expend money to start a personal voter registration system. 
Timing is of the essence. We could not do that. So at this point, all votes will be in one location. We don't wish to surprise anybody, but we wish to comply with the law. So absentee ballots are available in the business office if you know someone that is not going to be here. And as always, all the information, just like tonight's meeting, can be found on our website at www.horsetsdistrict.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming out. We're going to take questions now as we have presented you Horsets Building Our Future Now. So at this time, we have microphones at both sides. We'd ask you to come up, state your name, and the question into the microphone is best possible for our camera uh, because we are recording this and we have really honestly tried to make sure that anything that's said has at least been there for everyone to be able to research and hear on their own. So at this time, we invite you to come forward and we'll answer your question. Here comes one. While we're waiting, just so that you know, some members of the Board of Education are here. This is not a Board of Education meeting night. This is just for you. So although that I have five members, there is no intention of a meeting here. So we just wanted to give that for an interest of disclosure. Ms. Jordan? Just getting the ball rolling with, um, I apologize, seven questions, but some of them are just quick sure. answers. Uh, this is the first meeting that I've been able to attend, so I apologize if this is reiterating information that you all know. Um, number one, I was just double checking. The high school main entrance will now be at the back of the school, not beside the Casey Center Street, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, if the state pulls funding during the project, is it segmented so that we can, you know, continue on as a school or? Once, once the project is authorized by New York State, it goes into a queue. That's what I was talking about. The state allots so much money every year and that once the vote is certified and sent in, they have to allocate that money. Now, if the state ever pulled that money back, they would have some difficulty because it's a commitment by the vote of the people. Okay. The board, if ever there was a situation where it would increase anything for the community, the board would seriously have that discussion because I'm charged under them to make sure that I follow these numbers and only these numbers. Fantastic, always gotta worry about New York State. Yeah. Um, also, um, just speaking, you know, just as someone who works within the high school, um, I know AC is impossible, but would we be able to talk about adding ceiling fans into the classroom? Well, that's one of the discussions we're going to have to have down the road, because some of the things that we're finding out is we have to look at potential climate issues. Uh, the main reason is that there are times when you got the bid, and if you have spec, I can't say that we're going to be able to guarantee that, but if you have a replacement of, say, a unit ventilator, and it has the opportunity to have heating and cooling, some school districts will only price the heating, because that's our normal fee. But you could also potentially spec the cooling and see if you can get a better deal with it where it may not cost you as much. We can't guarantee that, but it is something the district would look at for the most reasonable places. Ceiling fans, I can't answer that. I'll let Chad, because I don't think New York State has many issues with that, but you don't usually yeah. see ceiling fans because somebody can get their hands cut or chopped off because unfortunately, <laughs> I'm height challenged. I don't have to worry about it, but other students may not have that ability. Yeah. The only thing I would add to that is um, a part of the project is renovating classrooms throughout the high school. Um, through the course of the years, Things have changed within the building, meaning maybe a wall's been torn down, a classroom's been expanded here, and the mechanical system didn't change with that. So some of, certainly not to say that providing a new unit ventilator is gonna make your room cooler, what it will do is do the same thing a ceiling fan would do. Because if you have the right size unit inside that room that's sized appropriately, it's going to, the whole intention of a unit ventilator is to bring that outside area and create movement. So I think by improving the mechanical systems, even if we're not providing cooling, ventilation and movement of air will be improved naturally. Okay, and that'll include better insulation for some of those classrooms, good. Um, and then two questions kind of center on this traffic flow. Uh, again, speaking mostly from a high school perspective, but also as a resident um, or past resident of the village of Horseheads, um, the way the traffic flow is sketched out, 
it looks like it's all going to be converging on Fletcher Street from one central parking lot. Um, have you done some traffic flow studies to see, like, observed in the morning? Because we currently have three parking lots. And for me, getting into the quad, it's still a nightmare with the buses and the students crossing, other cars coming and going. Yep. We haven't done any traffic studies. Everything that we put out right now is conceptual. Um, obviously, part of that design would absolutely be traffic studies and to see what the impact would be. Um, so, as of right now, nothing really done, but I think what we do feel confident about is um, some of the some of the things that we're going to look at is kind of how the parent, how the cars and the buses interact right in between the high school and Center Street. We've identified that as something we've really got to look at closely. And then obviously how they come out on Fletcher and what we can do to help improve that. So um, definitely things we're taking into consideration and not finalized by any means. Okay. And then that kind of goes into my next question about uh, during the construction phase 2018 to 22, um, how do we deal with parking? Construction is uh, <laughs> a necessary evil to get to the end, right? So there's never an answer that's going to satisfy everyone for that period. Um, what Welliver does have a great reputation of is being able to manage that. If you're familiar at all with the Corning Project, I think the entire high school was torn down at one point for an entire, like half the building was missing. For So we've been through some pretty major construction projects, even here locally. Um, and although there are some pains that come with it, um, we minimize those as much as possible and then, you know, really to get to that end. And then I know the classroom kind of things were conceptual, but that looks like there's no classroom sharing then, correct, between the teachers? Looks like the number of rooms yeah, so is what we, do, we literally took the classrooms that are in the current building are replicated in the new plan. Excellent. And then uh, that ends, answers my questions, and I'll just say I love the idea of updating our school district. It's definitely something we need as a resident, as a teacher. This is, you know, a great plan for us to, to modernize and, and stay competitive with other area schools. So I appreciate all the hard work of everyone. Thank you. I got everyone's questions. <laughs> One question. Um, I'm also in the engineering business. I <laughs> do a lot of industrial and plant layout work and that kind of thing. I'm hearing the word conceptual an awful lot. Um, the clients that I work for, if I throw that word out too many times, they're wondering how my estimate, how my company's estimate is going to be what you're saying they're going to be. You know, how close are you to nailing this thing down? That is a really generic question. Um, what, what, it, what it, I guess my question to you would be nailing down what $94.6 million worth of design. Yeah. Um, I think it's virtually impossible to be nailed down without a positive vote. There's a lot of work that's got to go into this before we can say what I am confident of is that we have some really good history that tells us what construction cost is based on a square foot based on certain amount of asphalt, asphalt that's gonna to need to be replaced. So although we may say that the layout of that entrance isn't the way that it's going to be at the end, what I do feel confident is that the square footage or the cubic yardage of that asphalt that we intend to replace will be within 5% of what we expect to be. So although the design may change, I think what we do in the process of our estimating, using square foot numbers and using kind of those generic units, um, the change within that puzzle may change a little bit, but the overall parameters of it don't necessarily change. So to be set in a design um, is not realistic, certainly at this point, but to, to be confident in our numbers, I think Welliver and ourselves are, are very confident in the numbers in terms of being able to lay out what we want to be able to do. That's what design contingencies are for, construction contingencies. So, I think that's the best that we can be at at this point. I've been through a few of these, and, and I feel really confident that the numbers will get us what we needed to get us. All right, so then this, is, this is in private industry where if you have an overage, you can yeah. you can write a scope a yep. scope change or whatever. What happens if you guys go over? We don't. No. <laughs> we we're I mean physically we're not allowed. That number would be the number, and one of the things, and I think you hit the nail right on the head. In private industry, you go out and design and 
pay for the design prior, and you get in very accurate numbers in the public sector, we are not allowed to do that because we can't expend the money to do the design until a community says yes. So we have to do our best job at getting you the maximum scope and the potential estimate. I, I will say this with well over here. They've never won any of my jobs that I've ever put out for bid. The reason being is they're a heck of an estimating company. They are usually a little bit higher than everybody else and then they pay the price. But what that gives me as an administrator and hopefully our board is that we have somebody that uses company trends, issues and, and objectives out there that gives us a best, most conservative estimate. So that hopefully we never have to fight that trend of being over. Now, it's like the project we currently just did from the smart bomb that, that's at the middle school and the high school as well as the softball field and so forth. A lot of people don't know, but we're about to wrap that up and I believe we're about $300,000 under budget. In other words, we can't find anything else that would be ethical and viable for us to work with state ed to spend the money on. So isn't it better that we come in on time and under budget? With this, our hopeful is that maybe that number is high. I can't anticipate that, but maybe it is, and we bring something in on time. That's one of those things. How do you judge a good project? That you got your scope, that you were able to do it with your budget or less than your budget. You were able to do it effectively without cutting any corners or having the trim to get the budget in line and so forth. That's why the board hired Welliver to be our construction management firm, and they won't be on the construction side. And they hired Hunt to be our architect between the two there to get the best physical outcome for the district. That's what we're hoping. You've got to take a long one. <laughs> um, again, this may have been already discussed. I wasn't late coming to this, but in Richmond specifically, you said you're going to update the scheme to better efficiency. And uh, what does that mean? Quick question. So there's traditionally uh, two delivery methods, steam and hot water, right? So what we've done, and we just got done doing this actually at Big Flats Elementary School last year. Uh, so we take the old steam boilers out, put in a high efficiency, I think they're like 98% efficient hot water boilers. Um, so it's still delivering hot water out to UVs in the, in the building. Uh, but smaller pipes, and obviously instead of delivering 220 some degree steam out and losing all that efficiency as it moves through the pipe, you're pushing water out that's 120, 125 degrees um, and insul through insulated pipes and, and moving it more efficiently. So that's really what that essentially boils down to. And to kind of touch on what Jillian over here said about moving into the future with uh, climate issues, what kind of energy standards are Yeah, so we are, um, right now, I think it was three, three years ago, we did the south boiler. So the south boiler room got a full overhaul, all new hot water, high efficiency hot water boilers were installed down in the south wing. The north wing is still currently steamed, that's happening in this project, so we'll be pulling all of those old steam boilers out of the north, north boiler room and putting high efficiency hot water boilers in. Um, so at this, at that point, um, that's a pretty significant energy savings here at this building by getting rid of those steam boilers. That's that's pretty much all of this north wing is being still being heated with that old steam. So so doing the same thing here at the high school as we are at the other elementary. Right. Sort of hard waiting, isn't it? it can be that. Please, there is no right or wrong question. There is nothing that we try not to be prepared for. If there's a question, somebody else might be thinking about it. One last chance. Please come forward. We'll be happy to share. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this night was for you. Uh, every one of our community meetings is for you. If you know of any group or if you have any questions, 
please contact the district office, contact Sue Perizzolo, ask a question or just call in. We'll be happy to meet with anyone and answer any of the questions. We want to thank you for giving some of your time tonight coming out. We hope you will seriously consider all information before you and at least spread the word to get people out to vote on October 17th from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. here in the high school South Gymnasium. Thank you very much for coming out for building our future now in Orsett. Have a good evening.